If I were to tell you there is a food out there that you could be eating to diminish the appearance of wrinkles, you'd probably wanna know about it, right? Well, if so, you have clicked into the right video because that is exactly what we're going to be talking about in this video. Don't get it twisted though. This is not gonna be one of those videos that's like, eat this, don't eat that, because diet is a lot more complicated than that. When we're speaking about our skin, it is a very large organ and it is responsible for protecting you from the outside world, from all of these environmental aggressors that would otherwise kill us on a day-to-day -day basis. You have your skin to thank as a shield against all of that nonsense. Plus, it keeps water in your body. When your skin as an organ system fails, it is life-threatening. So it is a lot more than cosmetic. Aging is a process that is unavoidable. It is part of life and it involves the accumulation of damaged macromolecules as well as reduction in the ability of tissues to renew. Part of the natural aging process, you get a gradual loss in structural integrity and functional abilities of a given organ system. So whenever you think about skin aging, you need to approach it with the mindset of preserving function and form as long as possible because you want that barrier healthy. You can think about the causes of aging in two categories. Things that are internal to you that you really can't control for the most part, like your hormones, your genetics, metabolism, and then things that are sort of external to that, extrinsic. In the case of your skin, ultraviolet radiation from the sun, pollution, infrared radiation, your diet, your nutrition, lifestyle factors like drinking alcohol, smoking. Don't underestimate the power of a reasonable diet and balanced nutrition as a measure for preventing aging and prolonging one's life. Without a doubt, nutrition is closely associated with skin health. When you have a crappy diet, it shows up on your face. Foods can be a source of functional anti-aging ingredients. And don't just think of a food as one particular anti-aging ingredient, but rather, you know, maybe a package of potential potential beneficial compounds and ingredients. How might nutrients and foods help our skin out and slow the aging process? They can do this through one of three ways. When you eat a food, it is digested in your digestive tract and absorbed, and that anti-aging ingredient can make its way to the skin and serve as a precursor for essential components of the skin. They may make their way to the skin and help to minimize reactive oxygen species, cutting down on the burden of oxygen oxidative damage in the skin that would lead to DNA damage, oxidation of lipids that are critical for that barrier function in the epidermis. Furthermore, these anti-aging ingredients from your foods may also help to enhance your skin's natural antioxidant systems, the enzymes there that need to deal with oxidative stress. The right foods, the right nutrients, the right anti-aging ingredients from your diet may help those things work better. Third, anti-aging ingredients from foods may actually serve as cofactors for enzymes that are necessary for how your skin handles and copes with and compartmentalizes environmental stressors that would otherwise age it. All right, now that I have told you all the ways in which anti-aging ingredients from your foods can benefit your skin, what food should you consider introducing into your diet provided you don't have some sort of severe allergy to it? Almonds. Almonds are actually rich in vitamin E, specifically alpha tocopherol. Vitamin E is a fat-soluble vitamin. It incorporates into the lipid membranes, the fats around skin cells. It incorporates there and it sits there ready to fight off those reactive oxygen species that would otherwise damage lipids. Outside of the dermatology literature, almonds as a source of vitamin E have a good track record for improving one's lipid profile in your blood and having a cardioprotective effect. There's roughly 12 and a half milligrams of alpha tocopherol in a 50 gram serving of almonds. That's roughly 46 almonds, give or take. But it doesn't just stop there, the vitamin E. It's got beta cytosterol, which is a plant sterol. Almonds also have squalane, manganese, magnesium. They're also a source of protein and they also provide fiber. And if you didn't know, the standard American diet or the Western diet is fiber penic. And, and we really do not get enough fiber in our diet. Most Americans at least are fiber penic. Almonds are a good way to introduce fiber into your diet. Fiber is really important for good gut health. And almonds are a good source of polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fatty acids. And when it comes to your skin, lipids are 
you know, vital. Uh, you know, lipids are necessary for barrier function and preventing transepidermal water loss, as well as minimizing the penetration of irritants into the skin and potential infectious microorganisms. Speaking of skin, the skins of the almonds are rich in phenolic and polyphenolic compounds. The research on the benefits of all incorporating almonds into your diet, it's not just limited to the dermatology literature and for skin and wrinkles. It's also been shown in studies looking at um, cardiovascular health. It's been shown to reduce markers of inflammation and chronic stress in people who are otherwise healthy, as well as people who have type 2 diabetes and in people who smoke. If you remember back to my video on you know all the ways in which smoking is bad for your skin, remember it wipes out all sorts of antioxidants and really leads to premature aging of pretty much every body system. Consuming almonds has also been shown to have a positive impact on one's blood lipid profile. What does the research actually show? Are there any studies to look at like eating almonds for anti-aging? As you can imagine, dietary studies are very hard to do, but there are some kind of decent ones out there showing some benefits for the skin. In 2019, there was a prospective uh, investigator-blinded randomized control trial looking at the impacts of consuming almonds in postmenopausal women. They looked at 28 women who had Fitzpatrick phototype either one or two. The Fitzpatrick phototypes basically are a way to label you in terms of how your skin responds to ultraviolet light. Uh, Fitzpatrick one and two are paler skin types, whereas five and six, very deep skin tones. It goes one through six. But in this study, the women were randomized to get um, 20% of their daily caloric needs from almonds or from a calorie match snack. The investigators did not know who was getting what. They ate either their almonds or their snack every single day for 16 weeks. And the investigators looked at facial wrinkles, sebum production, and transepidermal water loss, which is a marker of barrier function. At the end of the study, photographic evaluation of their wrinkles showed there was a 9% decrease in wrinkles compared to baseline in the group getting almonds. Oil production, which is sebum, was unchanged throughout the study. Why were they looking at sebum, aka oil, anyway? If you're somebody out there with oily skin, congratulations, people who have oily skin, they tend to have fewer wrinkles. It's thought that sebum has some sort of wrinkle protective effect. So they were thinking like maybe, you know, eating almonds might have some impact on sebum. And, you know, we wanna be able to correlate any change in sebum to any possible positive effect that we see on wrinkles. But really there was no change in sebum production. Now they didn't look at the lipid composition of the sebum. So that may have been a factor actually. Those people eating almonds, maybe their sebum had a healthier lipid composition Position. Interestingly, there were no differences between the two groups uh, in transepidermal water loss. So eating almonds didn't seem to have any impact on barrier function or oil production, but the almond group had quite a decrease in wrinkle severity and wrinkle width. How many almonds were they consuming? 59 grams, that's kind of a lot. Could they have gotten away with less? Possibly. Do you need to be eating 59 grams of almonds a day to, to get this effect? More research is needed. In 2021, kind of a similar study was done. This was a prospective randomized control trial. Again, postmenopausal women uh, of Fitzpatrick phototype one and two. Again, 20% of their daily calorie needs coming from almonds or from a calorie match snack. This time they looked a little bit longer. 24 weeks. Similar to the first study, at both 16 and 24 weeks, the almond group had a significant reduction in wrinkles compared to baseline, whereas the control group did not. Another thing they looked for in this study was pigment, and the almond group had improvement in melanin and pigmentation compared to baseline. This is very interesting because vitamin E is known to help protect the fatty membrane of the melanocyte. That is the skin cell responsible for making pigment. Vitamin E is also known to increase glutathione, which is important for 
fighting off oxidative stress that would otherwise contribute to pigment production. And vitamin E may have an inhibitory effect on tyrosinase, which is the enzyme that is responsible for pigment production. There was no difference in sebum production in the almond group. Interestingly though, the control group who was getting a calorie match snack they actually had an increase in sebum. When they went back and looked at the snacks and they compared the nutritional information, turns out the control snack group was getting about eight grams more of sugar a day compared to the almond group. So the researchers thought, well, maybe it's the increased sugar in the control group that's leading to the increased sebum production because I pointed this out before on how sugar impacts our skin, but it, it can lead to an increase in something called insulin-like growth factor, which is a hormone that plays a contributory role in oiliness. So that may be what led to that, which is interesting. But we do have an interesting study from 2021 looking at healthy Asian women, ranging in age this time, anywhere from 18 to 45 years of age. So not just postmenopausal women. This study was interesting in that it was looking at specifically at how incorporating almonds into one's diet might impact how well your skin handles the environmental aggressor that is ultraviolet radiation. In this study, the participants were randomized to get either one one and a half ounce almond snack a day or a pretzel snack a day, which was um, slightly fewer calories. 200 calories compared to the almonds were 246. Anyway, they ate their respective almond or pretzel snack every day for 12 weeks. And they looked at something called the minimal erythematous dose. The minimal erythematous dose, think of it as a packet of UV that would begin to damage your skin. How much is gonna take to start to damage your skin? So you can imagine, the better equipped your skin is to handle UV, the higher that dosage is gonna be. At the end of the 12 weeks, the group eating the almond snack every day, their minimal erythematous dose had increased. That was not observed in the pretzel group. When they looked at different qualities of the skin in the almond group, there were no differences in skin roughness, melanin, skin hydration, or sebum in the almond group or the pretzel group. There was no change. This study though is interesting in that it suggests that daily consumption of almonds may have a protective effect in helping your skin to be better equipped to handle UV radiation. In contrast to the others, this study was looking at Fitzpatrick phototype two through four, so deeper skin tones in this, in this particular study. These studies are promising. What are some of the limitations though? The limitations with the studies are kind of just looking in the short term, 16 weeks, 24 weeks, we're talking about the rest of our lives. How many days of our lives do we need to be eating almonds to be getting a protective effect? Um, you know, does it does it peter out at some point? Uh, does it d does the benefit you know kind of plateau after a while and then that's it and it's no longer maintained? Who knows? I suspect not, but uh, more research is needed. The other thing these studies didn't look at is what might be the effects um, on wrinkles of consuming almonds that have either been soaked or blanched, which are things that can actually increase the amount of available vitamin E from the almonds. So maybe you could get away with fewer almonds if they're soaked, who knows? <laughs> these studies did not include smokers. These studies also, the participants were told to avoid uh, high antioxidant, high polyphenol foods like strawberries. They were also told to avoid nuts, uh, nut milks. They can't, couldn't take any antioxidant supplements, and they also could not be using many types of skincare products. Like for example, no antioxidant serums, uh, and so very, very minimal of any skincare products that they used. So the researchers were trying as best they could to cut out some background noise so that they could focus on just the effects of the almonds, but you know, that's really hard to do in any kind of study, honestly. So rather than investing in expensive skincare serums and the like, should you just, you know, spend more money at the grocery store and, and buy more almonds? Because hey, let's be honest, food has gotten really expensive. Like I said, you can't underestimate the power of a reasonable diet and balanced nutrition, but does that mandate everyone be consuming almonds? No, if you hate almonds, you're allergic to almonds, I'm sure that you could get these things from other foods as well. All right guys, so it sounds like almonds are a promising food. We sort of already knew this. They have a lot of 
ingredients in them that can have benefits to your overall health and your skin will just kind of be a window into those benefits. Uh, but you know, have reasonable expectations. Don't go out and eat a bunch of almonds if, if you don't like them, certainly don't eat them if you're allergic to them uh, or they, you know, you have some sort of intolerance. I personally think eating almonds is a lot more fun than putting on a vitamin C serum, but to each their own. And arguably, you know, if the vitamin C serum that you're using is well formulated and getting into the skin, one might postulate that you might have additive benefits. All right, guys, let me know in the comments though, do you plan to incorporate almonds in your diet or are you already an almond fan? I love them and as a matter of fact, in preparing for this video, I went ahead and reordered some almonds from the Amazonian. Uh, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Now on the end slate, I'm going to put my video all about antioxidants and skincare and their pitfalls, limitations, and what we don't know about them. So watch that one next. But if you like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.